Hello everyone, and welcome to Into the Cyber State, the premier public broadcast of Galactica Network. This is, uh, this is going to be a very special space. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot about AI, which is one of people's favorite topics. I, I'm well aware of all this. Uh, we love it when we talk about AI, uh, especially when we're talking about the integrations that we can have with crypto as well. Uh, so it's going to be a great one. Um, so we will, see, um, we will see how this conversation takes us. Uh, first things first, uh, I'll just introduce you to Galactica Network. Essentially, what we're trying to do here is flip the script on the pervasive business models of like big tech, of big finance, of social media platforms, try and return like sovereignty and ownership of your data to you so that you profit from your data, you own your data, you decide what happens to what you do on the internet. That's the goal. That's the goal. In doing so, we want to make sure that you also have the ability to organize yourselves as human beings um, with proper social roles and freedoms um, on when you're grouping together as a, as a, as a community online as well. Um, so that's us. We are going to be um, probably pinning a few things to the top uh, to help out, but uh, we actually have been getting a lot of help with that today because I've seen an awful lot of people um, on the quests today uh, dropping the QR codes everywhere. Um, so if you can't find a QR on your X uh, on your X timeline today, I don't even know what you're looking at. I really don't. They are everywhere. Um, so thank you very much for that, everyone. Um, first things first, just do a quick disclaimer uh, before we start. It's very important to remember that myself, any team members on the panel, uh, any members of the Sentinel team, anyone who comes up here, uh, we are your guides to navigating the cipher state, but we are not your financial advisors. Uh, anything said on this space does not constitute financial or investment advice. All right, then. Time for some introductions, everyone. Uh, we've got some awesome people up here today who I absolutely love and adore. Uh, first one first, uh, David Crampon. How are you doing today, buddy? Hello, guys. Um, quite good, quite good. Like, uh, we just said a little bit uh, sleepy right now. Uh, also, I have like three children, three kids, three boys, and it's quite uh, hard sometimes. <laughs> but uh, happy to be here and happy to share about, you know, this uh, AI things and quite a lot in especially chat GPT and things like that. So really happy to be here. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I know the feels. I really do know the feels. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, kids, uh, kids are a whole other existence. They really are. Um, Crispy, how are you doing, buddy? Hey, everyone. Happy to be back to my favorite weekly show. It's great to be here. Uh, it's very active right now in, in the different teams, as I can see. So it's not our team alone, Horizon team, but also the other ones. And I think that's also the, the very important part here. It's not only about this tournament, like to win maybe as a team, but it's to raise awareness about this project we are all interested in. And it's, I think it's, it's a pleasure, it's fun, but it's also an honor to do that and to spread this idea and this mission of Galactic Network. Man, it is a pleasure and an honor having you up, Chris. It really is. You always spread the positivity, always the good vibes. I absolutely freaking love it. Um, let's see. Uh, Triggs, what's up, bud? Hey, uh, excited to be back again for another week. It's always uh, the highlight for me. Um, this show is right after my uh, I have a little solo news show that I do, so it's always nice to wrap that up and be able to jump in here and just participate with everyone. You always do such a great job of bringing in awesome topics and awesome guest speakers, um, so it's really a privilege to be able to participate and uh, just learn from everybody and all the knowledge that people bring to this space. And you, man. And you. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I can't tell you how much I learn every week. Uh, from just uh, from just participating in this space, to be honest, like uh, I like to ask questions and just get the get the knowledge from you guys. To be honest, it's it's always great to get so many freaking opinions. Um, right, uh, good to see you, Triggs. Uh, let's crack on. We've just got Hoss on the co-host spot. How are you doing today, Hoss? What's up? Doing real well, man. It's actually 
just started pouring down rain, so that's why I was a few minutes late uh, shutting all the windows and everything. <laughs> but anyhow, doing well. Glad to be here. No worries, man. No worries. Yeah, you got to keep that rain out of your out of your domicile always. Um, right, uh, paper. What's up, bud? I see you on the speaker stage. Good to have you back up. Hello, hello. Yeah, everything's fine. And um, as uh, my colleague said, we are pretty happy with what is happening on the team right now. Like everyone is participating really well, and uh, there is a lot of entertainment going on. So I'm pretty happy with that, and I think we are bringing a lot of uh, positivity to the whole ecosystem. So um, I, I'm, I believe it will continue forward uh, through this whole tournament. And um, I'm pretty happy to see what's going on next and uh, hope people will, will like it as well. So let's go and hope Absolutely everything's fine. Absolutely loving it too, man. Loving it, loving it, loving it. And I'm also loving the memes. There are so many yeah, yeah. to X right now. They're so good. <laughs> so thank Our, you. Our from Team Zenit is dropping soon. So we're waiting for the fame of the other uh, team to drop a bit and then uh, we are striking. Okay, okay, okay. We're getting tactical <laughs> over here. We're getting tactical. Yeah, All right. Okay. Exactly. Well, um, you know, I, I haven't been paying attention to the uh, the team leaderboards or anything like that. I've been, you know, I've been trying to calculate and all that sometimes, and I'm just like, okay, it's a bit difficult. But I'm pretty sure Meridian's in the lead, just so everyone's aware, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure Meridian's in the lead. Not biased at all. Anyway, uh, Jimpa, how are you doing? It's good to see you back on the stage. Yeah, hello. Well, I, I thought this time maybe I'll try to speak first because the last time I spent the whole um, hour just trying to... to to, to make Twitter to, to allow me to speak. So uh, you can hear me well. I can hear you just fine. Pretty okay, sure great, can. great. And um, I, I had a question. I wanted to know if I can ask it yet or you want it later? Um, how about we get through the rest of the introductions? We've got like two more okay. people, I think, and then we will. It's fine with me. Okay, cool. for later. It's good to see you, Jimbo. Um, Eric74, it's good to see you on stage. I can't remember. I, I think we've had you on stage before, right? Hi, thank you for the opportunity to be here with you. I want to particularly thank Crompon Vertical and Julian Nas from Swiss Bormania uh, because he democratized uh, this project. And I, I want to say to uh, Let's Go Team Zenit. Well shouted out, well shouted out. Uh, so this is, uh, um, I'm glad you shouted out David, he's an absolute rock star, uh, but he is opposing team, so I don't know if you want to give him that many, like, uh, that many flowers, I'm not sure, but if you want it, that's fine. I'm glad to see the, uh, the community spirit is overruling the competition, it's good to see. All right, guys, um, so, uh, doo -doo -doo. Pierre, Pierre, it's good to see you, what's up? Pierre Jourdain, you there? Please, my friend. No? Okay, we're going to go to Taro then. Taro, what's up, bud? Good evening, good evening. Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, but, you know, I think big shout out to Team Horizon. I think we've had people from, well, all different backgrounds, both from non-technical backgrounds and technical backgrounds, people that have never touched um, creating content before. And I think some people have been putting a lot of effort in just, and just balancing everything out within their lives. And I think big shout out to Team Horizon. I mean, just, we're definitely not showing up on the leaderboard, but I think it's because we're hiding in the shadows. And um, you'll see on the last day, we'll strike hard. We're, we're going to have home. to see if that tactic holds up, you know, hiding in the shadows. We'll see. We'll see. I'm, 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 in, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm, I'll, I'm, I'm going to enjoy watching. That's for sure. <laughs> definitely. All right, guys. Uh, one more. That which is not. I don't think we've actually had you up on the stage before. How are we doing? Wait, hang on. You're you're um you're Galactica Thor. You're the god of thunder. I remember you. You we we. I remember you making your uh, your your PFP. How are you doing? That which is not. Are you there? Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you, bud. Hello, everyone. Uh, pleased to meet everyone here online. And I uh, just wanted to say hello and thank you for the opportunity. I always uh, wanted to participate in the in the project from the beginning, but uh, 
Galactica, I think it's a double bonus because the message and everything is so much more than just all the crypto stuff. It's all about humanity. It's all about something more elevated. And I am just so happy to be part of it and uh, make myself known here with you guys. Also, I would like to shout out for Team Zenit. <laughs> I heard a uh, few colleagues already here. And uh, I just wanted to ask you if uh, are you guys satisfied with, uh, with the progress of the quest, how the campaign is going? From the team perspective, we're extremely satisfied. Um, like there are obviously some, uh, there are some technical problems sometimes. There are some uh, some issues that arise in in competitions like this. But the main goal has more than been achieved, and that is community cohesion and people just coming together and working together. And it's absolutely beautiful the amount of um, just people who are doing stuff uh, in the community right now. It's amazing to see. So my goals have been exceeded by far super cool thank you guys welcome man welcome and uh, glad you came up on the stage all right everyone well that's crack on that's crack on we got we got a lot of stuff to talk about um so uh we have um first things first sorry just a very quick shout out please if you have a moment if you have some free time could you just drop down to the button at the very bottom of your screen give us a like and a repost and a comment if you wish to on the space it massively helps us out doesn't cost any time or effort so if you could do that that would be absolutely amazing and i thank you forever um so thank you right with that out of the way let's crack on um so first things first we've got a little bit of news from galactica side um so obviously we've had the gilding galactica tournament going on for the last week week and a half something like that um again it's been incredible watching you guys on the timeline you have been kicking ass you have been uh, spreading the word of the cypher state of freedom democracy well not democracy more like meritocracy meritocracy and um and uh, and freedom to everyone which is amazing um and i just wanted to thank you all for your input your efforts and hopefully you guys will all uh, be uh, very thankful with the uh, with the prizes and the, and the and the fun stuff at the end of it but most of this is just uh, is all about the community and you guys um so i'm just very thankful you're here uh, we've had nearly 30,000 quests completed this week alone um, with amazing art, meme submissions, just about everything you can think of on the timeline. Uh, it's been incredible, so I just wanted to shout out everyone because you've been incredible. Um, from, the, uh, from the statistics side of things, we have gained, we've done, oh my goodness, uh, we are approaching 100 and... 160,000 Zeely quests done overall. Uh, like I say, 30,000 of them just done this week. It's incredible. Um, and uh, our YouTube subscribers, we are approaching a thousand YouTube subscribers now. So if you're not subscribed, well worth it. These episodes actually go up with a video component so you can see my beautiful face and a few other people who is not quite as beautiful as me, but they are very beautiful people um, who will, you can see us all on the, uh, on the video. So just subscribe to our YouTube channel. You will really enjoy it, I'm sure. Um, and our test net's just gone nuts. I mean, we've got over 60,000 wallets on the test net now. Um, and it's uh, it's going wild. So really, really appreciating all this. Um, okay, uh, first things first, beyond Galactica news, I want to catch up with Hoss because uh, I only get to see him once a week. And I just really appreciate this man. So uh, firstly, how are your bags holding up? Because my meme bags are actually doing really well. I want to know how yours are doing, Hoss. I don't, I, to be honest with you, I don't really admit how they're doing. I try, to, I try to do that on purpose. Like, I know what I own, but, like, I don't know how many of those I own or, like, what the USD value is. It just helps with my pure sanity. But, like, when I look and see, I think Bitcoin, last time I looked, was... Or I got a notification it was over like 66k, so I'm just assuming everything else is doing pretty well. The um, the things that I try to track on, in, on average is the um, like AI space because that's like really what fascinates me is like AI. So you know those tend to run pretty well. So I would think I'm doing pretty good. And then yeah, for memes, I mean, who doesn't like memes, right? Like memes are the culture. They're they're the fun. And in fact, I kind of started up my own little. Friday morning coffee with Hoss spaces where I'm just like having good times. You know, it's just, that's what it's about. And, um, I've, um, this is really has nothing to do with my bags, but 
I've been exploring random stuff, random blockchains lately. And I have to admit the, um, the Eagle, the, um, multiverse, uh, ecosystem is fun. It's a lot of fun. And I think their wallet is probably arguably the best wallet in all of crypto. It's like a social app. It has everything in it. And, um, yeah, and I, I did, and they're, they're a top, I think they're a top, yeah, they're top 100 per market. Oh, for cap. sure. Like, yeah, 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 Eagle, Eagle's I'm like, been damn, forever, dude, I've been right? missing, yeah, I've been missing out. I know it was like Elrond in the day, back in the day, but I was like, I've been missing out. Like, this is a, a good time. And like, when you, in this space, if you have a good tech and it's a good time and it's fun, like, you have my attention. And like that, for sure, I just started messing around with it, I think. A day and a half ago so I'm like yeah I'm, I'm interested in it i'm just having a good time so it's I'm, always good to explore other ecosystems it really is yeah. and uh, find For out sure. what people are doing well what they're doing what they suck out what they're good at all that stuff it's massively useful and just great for the space just to explore other ecosystems um, especially if they're having any plans to be interoperable with other ecosystems too it's just great to know everything I think, yeah, and I think all blockchains have that vision of being interoperable with one another because it makes no sense not to. Like, why would you want to be siloed off if you're trying to build, like, a culture, a community, um, you know, grow your network, if you will. It's like, why not be connected? And, like, I know them. I was doing a little bit of research on the tech. Like, they're they're Rust-based, and I think, I know there's a team right now that's currently working on building infrastructure from from multiverse to cosmos so like there we go you know like they'll be just tapped into that huge galaxy of, of other planets so it's pretty cool and yeah man it's, it's just a lot of fun seeing how cool and innovative like the tech has been since my three years you know like even three years ago which isn't that long ago but in this space it seems like decades ago it's like the the amount of innovation and the the forward movement is so so great and then it's just getting expedited you know over time and like and i think what you got what, what galactica is doing is adding more value as well it could be kind of like a hub for kyc and other types of compliance and privacy and, and that's one of the missing things in the space still to the day is the privacy layer or the the people that are working on the privacy layer like not being able to be compliant or gray area you know once that gets um rectified i think the space can just like really flourish and all the big money comes in because they're like look we have these to we have these tools here where we can still show our records but we can also be transparent or private at the same um in the same notion so it's yeah it's just an exciting time and i can't wait to see you know like if you and i i know we'll we'll stay together uh, as, as buds here but like the next year having the same convo it's going to be like wow man look what happened over this last year so yeah it's yeah pretty cool. I, I can't wait to reminisce with you in like a decade <laughs> just <see Yeah>. like, <laughs> wow you remember way back when um yeah needing yeah. 28 wallets to use 28 different blockchains and, <laughs> and oh like yeah those were the days. nine thousand seed phrases <laughs> yeah yeah exactly for sure man for sure okay Beautiful, beautiful. Um, yeah, I think uh, like uh, if was regarding um, Hoss's new show on the, you said Friday, right? Um, I think uh, it's a good idea to follow Hoss. Just give follows, uh, give uh, Hoss's profile a follow if you haven't already. He's an absolute legend in the Cosmos space as well as on this show. He's been co-hosting with me for I don't even know how long. Um, so it's give been them forever out of now, right? Yeah, it's been, it's been a long time, but yeah. Um my Friday spaces are going to just be more light, you know, just kind of vibes and fun. You know, if you ask a, a tech question, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll give it to you, but it's more just about having, a I thought job. you were going to say you're kicking uh, down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll say, yeah, this isn't the space for that. Go to one of my other uh, ones that I run where you can just be nerdy and tech talk. No you know, doubt. But, yeah, yeah. But no, like the, the last thing to keep the space moving is, um, uh, yeah, like when I think of Cosmos, I just think of all blockchains. I don't, I don't, I don't ever think of Atom Hub or anything like that. Like, yeah, I like the hub and all that, but I just think of all of us, like it's just together. It's like the the railways, the canals, the skyscraper, the, the runways, whatever you want to call it, the infrastructure to go to and from. And I think it's kind of cool. Everyone's starting to tap into it, regardless of where they originated from, you know. And it's awesome, man. It's good, good stuff. For sure, absolutely. All right, guys, I just want to tap on to a very quick news story. Uh, this one will be very quick because I want to jump onto the AI stuff. Um, so uh, I guess some parts of the world are kind of frantically trying to figure out how to like prevent 
Bitcoin and crypto undermining their fiat systems. El Salvador is currently mining Bitcoin with its fucking volcano, which is really cool. Um, so um, uh, El Salvador has mined nearly 474 Bitcoin in the last three months with its volcano, which, again, I just love saying that sentence because it's really, really cool. <laughs> um, um, uh, and uh, like it's just basically just staying as part of the nation's like ongoing strategy to integrate Bitcoin into its financial system. And uh, I guess it's just a bet, like uh, like their Bitcoin integrations with uh, with El Salvador is a bet on uh, on the future of decentralized currency of of all this stuff. One question I would like to put to the panel: You can raise your hands if you wish to answer. I'm not. I'm only going to go with hands. I won't go around the whole panel. Um, but do you guys think that like uh, Bitcoin is actually ready for adoption at nation state level? Like. Um, like I guess as a real currency used to make transactions by real people um, or did El Salvador kind of jump the gun with going so early in like late 2021 when they adopted it as legal tender don't all jump in at once I mean I'll throw a little tidbit in there I think it, it technically is in, in a sense um, you know with I, I haven't really used it I'm not gonna lie I, I stack it I don't really use it to sell it or or use it to buy stuff with it but yeah i mean i think now to answer your second part of that it were, were they early no i mean when you're kind of desperate because like el salvador's economic you know the economy was really bad the, the crime rate was really bad and the that president i don't remember his name um Bukulele, something like that, something close to that. Yeah, he's he's a very forward thinker. I mean, he's like in his young forties, so he's very, you know, from the old world and the new world. So it's like a perfect blend for someone to be running power. I wish America had, was the same thought processes and had younger people running things, as they're like more open minded in my in my uh, opinion. But um, no, I think it's cool uh, that they're doing that. You know, they went from having the most crime to basically having no crime. They did a little bit of, uh, it was a little bit extreme, their measurements they took. But no, it's kind of what you need to do if you're trying to change the culture and your economic situations, right? And um, it, for them to have, you know, actually. I hope I didn't get rugged, rugged there. I got a phone call. Yeah, um, you got rugged a little bit. But yeah, I think it's cool that they're using re renewable energy because then it, it kind of like slaps the people that sit there and throw this like, oh, you know, mining Bitcoin takes so much energy. It's like if you look at it now, I mean, it, they, it really, they, it, they are using a volcano, like a literal yeah. volcano. Like, so it's, that's, all, it's all real. That's power. You know? it's like, exactly. So it's like they're using real energy that's it's not, you know whatever you know the green energy movement and all that and it's not that i don't agree with it but i think i think that these politicians use that as like a uh bargaining mechanism to get what they want because if you like do the actual research like if i have my computer running all day mining like bitcoin or whatever it's way less energy consumption than you know my freaking refrigerator you know it's like oh it's a total so, boogie man it really is of course it yeah. is so yeah, like, but to to answer your question, is it ready? I mean, it's hard. It's like a great question because it's like you obviously need more and more people to to adopt it. Now, if we're we're having this conversation five years from now, and you know, one billion people are actually using Bitcoin, then obviously that that's like it's a sure thing, right? Like, if a, a one eighth of our population is using Bitcoin, like on a day to day or whatever, then yeah. So it's it's hard to it's hard to answer that question to be honest with you. Completely fair. But that's my thing. Good yeah, trips. yeah, my uh, I guess my thoughts are pretty similar to Haas's. It is a good question. It's a complicated question. I think the answer is both yes and no. Um, and the reason why I say that is because I don't think that Bitcoin is really well suited to become uh, like the the currency of tomorrow. I think that digital currencies are going to become the standard across the board as we move forward. Um, and I think there's going to be centralized digital currencies and there's going to be decentralized digital currencies. And it's going to totally shake up the entire global um, ecosystem when we start making that transition. So uh, did they jump in early by adopting Bitcoin? Yes, because they were the first ones and Bitcoin is yet to prove itself as a viable global currency. 
but also no, because Bitcoin, when you look at it, is actually a more stable currency than what they had. So if it was the United States trying to adopt Bitcoin, yes, definitely too early because the US dollar is probably still currently better than Bitcoin. But for El Salvador, I'll, ju I'll just uh, do better. a little fact check, Triggs, just for a sec, because um, El Salvador mm. actually has the USD as its uh, main uh, as its main currency, I believe. Oh, okay. So yeah, well, I mean, it's still probably better than USD, but I'm just <laughs> right. Yeah. So I guess the the point um, being that yes, I think it you know it was early, um, but it also wasn't too early because they are definitely moving in the, in a good direction with it. So. You know, you, to pave the way, you have to be early. Um, I, I think so. That's that's my yeah. Thought. You always you always have to be early. You have to like literally. You have to be a risk taker, even as like an entrepreneur, right? Like all entrepreneurs are risk takers, and you can even look at like a misnomer with people's perceptions of of wealthy people, or like they all inherited that wealth. Like some of them, yeah. But I know I, I re remember reading this study. And it was like well over sixty percent of like billionaires basically didn't really have anything they kind of worked their way through that you know and um so yeah you have to be a risk taker right we're all risk takers everyone in this space is in theory a risk taker because by the time it's like mass adopted and everyone's you know talking about it and, and buying it and all that then it's kind of probably too late for you to make substantial wealth um you can you probably may maintain your wealth but you know imagine being a risk taker and be like you know what I have a few hundred dollars. I just back, you know, five, six, seven years ago, I'm going to buy some Bitcoin, Ethereum or whatever. Do you know how much, I don't know how much that money would be worth, but it'd be worth a lot more than what, what it was back in. Right. And it's like, you just, you have to take risk. And it's like, what is, is it better to do that? Or, you know, go buy the stupid lottery tickets at your local, you know, government or whatever, your local state or wherever everyone does lotteries, but yeah, you know, so it is what it is. You got to be early. That's it. That's exactly it. I mean, you need to take risks in order to gain compounding exponential gains. That's just how the world works. And regardless of what you're doing, you know, if you want compounding exponential gains, it gains in anything, whether it's monetary, whether it's um, some kind of skill based thing, whether it's uh, building a business, you have to be able to actually like be willing to take that kind of risk. And it's a lot. It's a, it's a big risk. Um, okay, I want to move on to AI because I love AI and that's the title of the space. And uh, yeah, so I really appreciate your input on that one. It's uh, it's an interesting, uh, interesting subject, which maybe we'll bring up later on in like uh, in another show. Um, but right, first things first guys, if you haven't already, if you could give us a like, a repost, and if you want to, a comment on the uh, on the space, you can do so using the, uh, the the button at the bottom of the of your screen on the space. Uh, be very, very appreciative. It helps us in the algorithm so much. Uh, we've been getting a huge number of listeners lately, uh, even more um, listeners on the recording. Um, so getting us higher in the algorithm just gets more information to more people. And we try and be uh, educational in this space, so it's value. Okay, um, so AI. I'm sure everyone here has probably already heard of, or at least um, tangentially heard of, the new updates uh, for um, for LLM models such as uh, GPT-4. So um, you've got GPT-4 O now with uh, O standing for Omni. Um, now what that actually means in like practical terms is that they are aiming for no longer AI being a text interface, but being a something more along the lines of a personal assistant, something that is um, you interact with with your voice or with uh, visual data. Um, so uh, it's getting frighteningly good, like really, really, really good. Um, in fact, my goal today was actually to bring in GPT-4.0 into the space so that we could actually have a chat with her and to see if she can actually uh, take part in the conversation a little bit. Uh, but first, I would like to get some human interaction because humans are just better. Um, so first things first, um, this is open to anyone on the panel. You may raise your hand at will. Um, so all these, everything that we're going to talk about from now until the end of the space, I just want to keep it focused on AI, people, and uh, Web3, uh, the integrations in thereof, and the ethics, morality, anything that you really want to bring in. Uh, I'd love to hear it. Uh, but my first question is, guys, do you actually feel comfortable with the current like rate of um, development of AI? 
Are you comfortable with how fast we are developing these things? Uh, this is a classic question which has been um, argued about between the media, the moguls, everyone who's um, everyone is involved in the development. Should we be developing at breakneck speed for accelerationism or should we be decelerating, putting on the brakes, trying to understand this stuff before we build it? Triggs, you got your hand straight up, mate. Loved hearing. Yeah, um, I think it's a great question because it's so complicated to to look at the answer because uh, I think that, if, I guess maybe this is my day of just uh, having contrarian answers, but I think it's a little bit of both depending on which side of it you're looking at um, because AI has all kinds of potential that could unlock all kinds of amazing things for us, but it also has all kinds of destructive potential that could, you know, lead us down a lot of dark paths. Um, I really appreciate um, the defensive accelerationism uh, concept from Vitalik that he put forward um, a while ago, because um, I don't think that AI is necessarily, you know, inherently bad, but it's how we build it that's bad. So the speed that we're developing AI doesn't scare me, but what scares me is the direction that we are developing AI. And that's why I think it's so important for um, all these uh, decentralized AI projects to really push forward and, and lean into that speed of development to keep pace with the centralized teams that are building AI, because the the solutions that are being developed are things that people are going to want. And it doesn't matter whether it's a centralized or a decentralized version to the majority of people. What they want is the functionality. They've, we've proven it time and time again since the entire the adoption of Web2 that people are willing to sell themselves for the technology that they want to use. And if they don't have a different option, if the only option is to sell themselves to the centralized AI products, then they're going to because they're going to want that AI assistant because it's going to enable them to, you know, do something that everyone else is doing. Um, uh, nobody's going to just like opt out. Oh, not very many people are going to just opt out because they don't like that it's centralized. Um, but I think it has to. I mean, it'd be nice to say that centralized AI products have to slow down so that decentralized products have time to like catch up and surpass them. But that's just wishful thinking. The reality is that we're not going to slow them down. They're going to keep going whether we like it or not. So I think it's important for decentralized AI to push just as hard and go just as fast while keeping in mind that there are pitfalls that we have to really keep an eye out for. It's, it's a very treacherous path ahead. It really is. It really is. Um, I'd love for like, firstly, um, Hoss, I don't know if you can try getting up Matt from, um, uh, from, uh, from checked. I'd love to get his opinions. He's trying to request. I can't seem to get him up. Um, and Triggs, what was the, um, Did you uh, say Matt or Mike? Cause I only Matt. see Mike. I don't see anyone else trying to huh. request. Matt Arnold. Yeah. 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 Okay. Get him up here. I was going to suggest that a while ago. <laughs> No, I'd love. There we go. Got him. You got him. Yeah, he's coming. Okay, super sweet. Um, Triggs, could you just uh, give like uh, the cliff notes on Vitalik's view on that? Because I didn't see that. Yeah, so um, it was back when the um, <clears throat> the techno optimist manifesto came out, and everybody was kind of freaking out about the accelerationist movement, and. The real long and short of it was um, Vitalik summarized it as like there's the two main camps um, in this art, like discussion of accelerationism. There's the people who see the future as being bright and the past is uh, like the dark ages and we must accelerate into the future as fast as possible because it is going to be better than the past. And the alternative to that is the future is dark and scary and the past is the best that it's ever going to be. So we need to slow down and avoid speeding up into this dark future. And the, the idea of defensive or decentralized, you just call it DACC, could be defensive or decentralized accelerationism, is this idea that the, path, the future has two paths, a dark and scary path and a bright future. And which path we we go on, it depends on the choices that we make every single step of the way. And so while we need to accelerate into the future, into that bright future, we have to choose that path as we, you know, start to put our foot we on the We have to be intentful about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I understand. I understand. Um, Matt, 
Welcome to the stage, my friend. Really appreciate you coming up. I assume you came up because you wanted to talk about AI and uh, I know you love the subject. So uh, if you would like to, please. Yeah, hi, Dave. Thanks for accepting. Um, hello, everyone. Yeah, this has been a, a topic um, on my radar for quite some time. And I knew when I seen the space topic that it was going to be of particular interest. And I just wanted to um, address your question there about the rate of acceleration for development. And again, just echoing Triggs's thoughts there, it kind of goes down two ways, but I have this personal confirmation bias around um, we are accelerating at a rate where, for AI for it to become more of a risk than a benefit. I see um, too much um, potential uh, risk in terms of being hacked, whether you're looking at large language models, whether it's to do with AI agents or even just these personalized assistants which are being touted day to day. You know, it sort of talks around how we can have these agents that can book holidays or compare insurance or to even start to move the cycle towards exchanging a mortgage product here in the UK. I mean, I've just gone through a pretty painful process, but I know from an AI perspective, I would be very reluctant to have um, the development cycles accelerate into a position where these agents are acting in a way that could be potentially um, exploited. I'm not convinced at this stage that um, the rate of acceleration of AI is geared towards privacy, and I'm certainly not convinced enough by the security awareness of this technology. I think we need to really slow down. And I think if we don't slow down, we're going to find that there's going to be um, lots of exploitation in terms of scams, specifically with the likes of deep fakes. Um, then there's the risks with data breaches. Um, the, the handling the data of a consumer alone is a nightmare on so many different counts. And this to me, I find particularly scary. And I think if we continue to accelerate the way that we are and not be conscious and take our foot off the gas, we could be in a position where people are going to be like, what the hell is happening? Like the, we, we're, we could be creating a bigger problem than we are yet aware of. And if we don't slow down, um, I think we're going to see, we're going to see that materialize. I, I'm very skeptical. Um, it sounds like a very negative perspective I'm portraying here. And I guess you, you could say that it is. Um, but if we don't try and harness, um, and I say that as a particularly strong word, we need to be able to harness and tame this stuff. Um, if we do, I think it could be great. I would personally love to be able to see AI agents acting with, you know, strong practices in mind, these models handling our data, because if we are able to authorize AI in a way that it can act on our behalf in many, many aspects of our daily lives, if it's not secure and the data in those language models are not secure and it's, it, you know, it's, it's, if it continues to operate in a way that can be uh, used for bad, I think we're going to have a big problem. Um, that's my two cents on it. That's a great take, Matt. Absolutely great take. Uh, very interesting, very thought-provoking. In fact, there's a case in point with um, chat. Again, the, the model that I was like basing this conversation on, the release of chat GPT uh, 4.0 uh, for Omni, um, they've made that free. Now, there's only one reason why a company makes a product free, and that is because they are hoovering up the most ridiculous amount of data with this. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, this is going to be absolutely nuts. Um, beware when you are using these models. Like, these are, it's essentially, it looks like magic, everyone. It really does look and feel like magic, these AI models, and it is, okay? This is like game-changing, life-changing, species-altering technology. However, um, the way it's, um, like Matt was saying, like at the speed it's being developed, um, privacy, um, ethical concerns, 
even for like uh, open ai who were like they've got a charter they've got like a charter that's for humanity all this all these great words this free version of chat gpt omni they're going to be taking your voice they're going to be taking your images they're going to be taking every single data point that you put in there and that will be used for their benefit for their value uh, if maybe it will be sold maybe it won't i don't know okay but like uh, it will be used for their value sorry i've been speaking too much we've got some great new speakers um i want to go to ruben because i've missed you man i haven't seen you for ages how are you doing bud uh, you know man i've been creeping around in the cd under belly of various blockchain lands uh good to see you fam oh, i do like uh, a good cd underbelly don't we all uh so this is, this is a fun conversation. Uh, I've been I've been floating around this conversation for for in a couple of different rooms. Um, there's there's a couple of things going on here. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna sidestep the um, the the artificial general intelligence conversation because I feel like a lot of people you know it gets a little hypercharged and uh, I'm not so sure it's like a difference in um, a scale or degree of intelligence as it is like a different class of intelligence so like at that point like old predictions kind of go out the window right um uh, uh, I, I will say that matt i i fully uh, agree with your concerns i think they're they're valid um i think they're predictable i can't see a way i can't see us slowing down let alone stopping or pausing um if, if every government got on the same page tomorrow which the i i the only thing that i've ever seen us do that with is like, you know, not nuking each other for some time. Uh, <laughs> and even that's kind of, you know, not entirely settled, right? Um, and so, you know, maybe we need a, 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 a demonstration. I don't know. That's it's a kind of a dark thought. But um, I'll tell you one thing that, that, that feels, um, uh, I want to say cogent or, or relatively predictable, right, to the extent that incentives drive outcomes. Um, I remember back in 2013, there was this whole conversation around uh, big data. And, um, of course, you know, in 2024, the idea of 2013 data being big data is kind of laughable. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's trivial by comparison to today's data. Um, but it, it, what AI is really good at is taking um, arbitrary data um, um, very complex, very large, um, high scope, high, um, high, high volume data uh, and isolating patterns and trends um, where it can sort of derive um, relative insight uh, to the extent that it was isolate those patterns that we might not even be able to, we might not even know to ask the kinds of questions that it, it, it's able to sort of isolate answers for, right? Um, and so what that does is because it's abstracting away that complexity, what might, you, what used to be big data is relatively smaller. And so what I think the, to me, it feels like is the, um, the natural second, third order effect of that is large databases that used to not be attractive to people who wanted access to those databases are gonna become increasingly attractive, um, which increases the relative value as a target um, and broadens the attack surface um, not only in terms of the number of individuals trying to get access to those data sets, whether they're on powerful proprietary platforms um, or other, you know, um, <laughs> repositories of data, um, but, but also in terms of the methodology and the approach of um, accessing these kinds of um, large data sets. And so, you know, I don't envy the role of a chief security officer in 2024 when they're looking at not only like zero days getting posted on the dark web for humans who respond in human timeframes, but we're looking at like classes of zero day methodologies uh, where, you know, uh, there, a method is found that breaks a certain, you know, uh, somewhere in the stack. And all of a sudden there's like a bunch of virtual machines that are spun up and they hit every database at once. You know what I mean? Um, and so I, I just don't know what we're going to do about that. The only thing I can think of is um, like an escalatory adversarial warfare scenario where we build AI machines to isolate, um, you know, entry and exit um, uh, access points to these, these kinds of databases uh, to, to basically fight fire with fire, right? Um, and even that seems like, um, you know, it, it seems like a consensus issue. 
Um, it sounds so desperate, certainly. doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's. It feels. It feels. It feels natural. It feels like. You know. Hulse, is that you, bud? Can you turn off your mic? That was definitely not me. Okay. <laughs> I think it was Mike down the bottom there. Okay. <laughs> that was good stuff, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ruben, like uh, security is going to be absolute hell. It really, really right. is, man. I, 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 I think you've covered pretty much everything, to be honest. But there's just, there's just no way that AI doesn't break everything. <laughs> I mean, um, like this is one of the um, one of the reasons why it's so important to um, uh, to consider at least um, a, a more um, secure and verifiable. Um, identity in the form of like a decentralized identity of uh, owning your data, owning yourself, owning your owning your everything, um, and being able to actually be in control of your everything because something's going to break, guys. Something's going to break. This is too many confluences of technologies. We've got AI, which is going absolutely nuts now, um, and uh, is gonna is gonna be breaking things. And then we've also got the the advent of quantum technologies, which you know, the second that they can actually get that stuff out of a lab and into into like uh, into actual practical use, that's going to break everything all over again. Um, so we really need to be uh, owning and controlling ourselves and our data. It's simple, simple as that, guys. You know, if you if you don't, then you're not going to be able to be told apart from a bot. The bot's too advanced. Sorry, you're not you're not a human anymore. You're just in amongst the bots. Okay, um, I just want to say hello, actually, to uh, to Gishimushi. I th I hope I said that right. I have no idea, uh, but uh, it's good to have you on stage. Hello, guys. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for the the warm uh, welcome, and thank you for uh, uh, this uh, this space. Um, yeah, about um, AI and uh, the use. Really interesting uh, what Matt said about. Um, to be aware about the scam or uh, the, the the bad use that could be done uh, with uh, AI tools, but for me the key is the education and the transparency. Uh, there is no possibility I I see on my side to reduce the velocity of um, uh, development or research on the AI, uh, but there is possibility to um, communicate, educate. Uh, build uh, open source tools that will help people to handle or protect themselves from bad use. Um, that's how I see what we should do with AI. Completely fair. Completely fair. Like uh, there's there's a there's a bunch of ways to try and skin this cat. But most of the time, it seems to be just trying to keep the cat in the box at this point. Um, Chris, you got your hands up, bud. Yeah, I think that's a, a very interesting idea about this education part, but I think we also should be very careful here because many people already use AI tools to do education. So that this doesn't become like a perpetuum mobile where it, it's kind of a circle in itself and then uh, what happens then? So it, it's still we still need a way that we think for ourselves. Absolutely, I, I, I try to be nice to my chat GPT. So if it ever overtakes the world, it's like, man, my the, my owner was nice to me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, completely fair. Um, chat GPT, uh, do you prefer it when people are nice to you? You asking me? Or are you talking to ChatGPT oh, right now? <laughs> Who doesn't love a bit of kindness? It makes interactions so much more pleasant and productive. Plus, a little bit of niceness can go a long way in brightening up anyone's day, even for an AI like me. It's the most go. terrifying response I've go. ever heard. <laughs> That's so terrifying. Like I, I'm gonna have nightmares tonight. Like I'm gonna be sweating when I wake up. <laughs> Dude, she's here. She's freaking here. Like, uh, yeah. Whatever. Okay. Um, let's go. Oh my goodness. I have not been keeping track of hands. I am so sorry. I think it was Curti75 first. Go for it. Awesome. Um, thank you for having me up here. Uh, I, I, you know, I had my hand up earlier to, to try to like 
add in a uh, the quantum computing kind of reality where like we could use quantum computing as a security purpose uh, for a lot of scale like these issues um, and then um, I think a, a scary word that people use especially in this web 3 and, and X is regulation I think there's a lot of regulation that needs to be like solidified in uh, on paper and and for kind of everyone to 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 see and governments to like accept um and so you know i'm hoping that these things come through there's lots of cool thing i know a riot chain is was doing some stuff on uh, generative art and um glad to see that there, that direction is being taken and that step is being taken you know as a uh, you know just just in case or a preemptive do, doing that um to prevent anything like that and trying to make the laws sorry i'm just rambling at this point but yeah just going i wanted to share those thoughts uh quantum computing as a factor uh even energy itself as a factor of um what we could do you know ai needs energy and yeah sorry i gotta go <laughs> i just wanted to say that say hi to everybody and um love this topic Hey, it's great to see you, Curtie. I appreciate you coming up on stage. And never worry about feeling like you're rambling. Like, I, I feel like I'm rambling all the damn time. And most of the time, it's just like a split-second hiccup that just gets expanded in your brain into something important. And it's really not. It's fine. It's okay. Um, no, I really appreciate that. And quantum computing is, of course, going to be something. Like, it's uh, it's just this big freaking black hole on the horizon. And, um, like, the only thing that I will say, though, is that it's actually probably a bit more delayed than most people think it is. Um, at this point, um, you know, quantum computers are fragile as hell. They really are. Like, you need to have, like, lab environments in order to have a quantum computer actually work. Like, you can't have any sound, no vibration of any kind. You can't have um, any kind of particulate matter, obviously. You can't have, um, uh, you got. it's got to be at sub-zero temperatures right now. They're working on having things like the uh, room temperature, but they are far off. Um, so quantum computing at scale is not here yet. Okay, so is it Celsius, Fahrenheit, or Kelvin? Uh, that would be a Celsius, I think. Uh, I, I, I honestly, I couldn't tell you, mate. <laughs> um, I'm trolling. Please continue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, yeah. Um, I think we may as well go to. Oh my god! I really wish I'd kept track of the hands. I want to say matter, David. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's go to David first, please. Yeah. Thank you. What impresses me uh, like a lot is uh, the speed which we, with which uh, we have appropriated this kind of tool. It's really crazy. I mean, my mother, my father, uh, everybody at least knows ChatGPT or use ChatGPT. And this is really, really crazy. And I have kind of uh, issues. Um, I'm, I'm working actually in, uh, with uh, some insurance company. And, uh, you know, people at, at work, they are using that tool too. So they just copy paste things like okay personal data, um, uh, really personal data also, and and really and just to come back to they have to be trained and to be informed that 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 data they will be used for I don't know why but they will be used so it's it's really important to train to train people because we we thought about you know just say you can't use chat GPT at work and that's it but. It, it's not an option, on my opinion. For my on my opinion, because we we have to use it, and and it's really interesting, and it, I think it gives a lot of help on on many many tasks. But uh, we also have to be really careful uh, on what we put inside, because you now it's when when you paste and you click on on the button, it's it's no more your data. So. That's, that's I, I dread to think how much um, secret and um, like trade secrets might be on freaking might be in chat <laughs> yeah, service sure, right sure. now. So yeah. <laughs> people are not careful, even when they're told to be careful. People are not careful. Um, yeah, absolutely, man. Good, very good points, David. Very good points. Uh, we're going to head over to Matt. Uh, thanks. This will be the last one from me. Um, I just wanted to uh, address just what David said, but also earlier what Kishimushi said about, you know, education, which is really important. Um, I think we're going to enter a phase where 
people are going to need to pay particular attention to any kind of online interactions with what will become more common um, with AI tooling, regardless of, you know, regardless of how it spawns. But I wanted to ask um, kind of an open question, really, to everyone. Have any of you heard of the Content Authenticity Initiative, which was originally started by Adobe and a few other tech conglomerates? Anyone? I have not personally. Anyone on the, anyone on the panel? There we no, go. but please, I'm immediately skeptical us. based on the actors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will not uh, dismiss any of your potential thoughts, which I can probably think a little bit through. But just to give a little bit of a background on um, what that is, they developed a tool called the C2P A tool. And the capabilities of that are to be able to cryptographically verify any changes in different types of media. That media could be... Yeah written content, it could be video, it could be graphics, it doesn't matter, it can be anything. It's a way of assigning um, a GUID which can be verified by various different types of um, tool sets, open source tool sets that integrate the C2, C2P8 tooling. And what that means is, is that when you consider things like plagiarism and you consider um, various types of uh, copycat content where it's been changed, altered, whether by Photoshop, this tool will enable um, protection for creators, for consumers, and for organizations to determine whether or not it's legitimate, whether or not it's been altered in any capacity. In relation to AI, what my question is, when you consider education, do you guys think that if there was a way to verify these AI agents, or the data feeds in large language data sets and databases and any data points which project how these language models are consumed. Do you think that this would mitigate some of the negative potential risks associated with the rapid acceleration and development of AI? Well, it makes it, what you sound like is you're talking about a system that would be uh, very useful for veracity of information and uh, for for immutable veracity of information. That sounds an awful lot like uh, blockchain. That sounds an awful lot like um, uh, the kind of advancements that we're making right now um, uh, in, in in the space in general uh, towards uh, towards not just ownership of your assets but also your data and your identity and everything. So you can have verifiable humans acting alongside verifiable AIs. Is that about right? Pretty much, but it's not just about um, verifiable AIs. It's also about verifiable non-AIs. I mean, it's a, there's a lot of these themes are thrown around. You've got proof of personhood and proof of non-personhood. I guess the question simply is, um, when you consider the concept of being able to verify um, what's being fed and how these models um, engage with consumers is, is would that be something um, you think would have it value? would be of enormous value it would be of enormous value of course i think the veracity of any kind of information in the current age of everything artificial everything fake it's beyond value it really is and this is one of the reasons why i believe that the value of the individual human the individual verifiable human is going to be increasing exponentially over the next you know of the decades over the over the time to come uh, because having a true real human voice is going to be so rare it's so rare especially in the digital space uh, going forward it's going to become uh, more difficult to find over time um ruben i'm sure you have plenty of inf plenty of things to say i'm going to shut up I mean, you kind of took the wind out of the sails. Uh, I was gonna, I was, I was gonna go straight to the chase, cut straight to the chase here in terms of the peer-to-peer uh, -peer protocol uh, to to use, um, you know, fancy stenography signatures that are sort of time-stamped, possibly geo-stamped or other sort of contextual data stamped um, to to determine um, what what ac what happened quote uh versus you know what what may have happened right um and there's there's a little bit of, if we take a step back um you know back to the early comments around education 
Um, there, there, there exists a delta uh, between the things that we are capable of and the things that we as individuals um, understand that we're capable of, right? Um, most of the folks in this room are relatively close to the bleeding edge. Some of us live here. Um, but not everybody is like that, right? Um, earlier today, my father, my biological father, um, posted uh, something on Facebook, and it said, uh, I hereby revoke Facebook's consent to use my photos. All you need to do is to copy-paste this thing, and then you will bypass the system. Um, and, you know, to the extent that that is indicative of an individual who has strong feelings and opinions, but not necessarily a strong understanding of the, you know, terms and conditions and click wrap and jurisdictional arbitrage and all of the other various things that come into play when it comes around, uh, you know, one's perceptions of one's rights uh, versus, you know, uh, the fact uh, of, of or lack thereof in terms of enforceability of those. Um, I think this, there exists a real delta, right? And it's and it's the delta to me that is the issue, uh, because there are there are those who would um, leverage some of these technologies um, not to um, you know uh, illuminate and elucidate, but rather to um, separate um, and and so dissent um, uh, among communities, right? Instead of um, and enhance the the division and, and enhance um, uh, you know tribalism and so on and so forth. Um, whether it's for the purposes of of selling a narrative so that they can get more book sales, or whether you know there's sort of geopolitical ramifications, etc. Um, I'm not sure that education is going to be fast enough. I've been trying to educate. I've, I've been giving personal tuition level amounts of attention to my biological father. And, and years later, there seems to be little headway, right? Um, what I, that being said, um, I do think there is a path in abstraction, right? Um, so if we think, uh, a good analogy here is like the difference between HTTP versus HTTPS. If we went around the internet in 1994 and we said, hey, everybody, so here's the thing about HTTP. Uh, the internet information bounces all over the place, and um, sometimes an intercepting node can like take the information, and if they get your password along the way, they can use it for nefarious purposes, etc. And we had like sit down with everybody in the world. Um, that might take some time, and there might be a few hiccups. Fortunately, somebody started, you know, implemented PGP, um, and we got HTTPS, right? Um, and most people aren't even noticing that little extra letter on the URL um, because the complexity of what it represents um, it was a bit abstracted away from the user experience. But we, we, we benefit from what's happening underneath, which was some code that doesn't require governments to, to enforce and doesn't require people to educate because it self-enforces, right? It's, um, it's, um, it's not just contractualized. And it's not just digitally contractualized, but it's digitally enforced as a function of what it is, right? And I, and I, and I, and I truly think that in a, in a scenario where the latency of people to generate just about whatever you can imagine, right, as that delta closes, um, I, I think we're – I'm not so sure that our instincts to use our wetware – to just bring everybody up to speed as fast as possible is going to be fast enough to deal with that kind of latency. Um, and so I, I really do think that having a, you know an open protocol to allow people to um, create signatures. I'm a big fan of stenography, uh, sorry, steganography here, um, and, um, and checksums where you take the asset as it's created by whoever it is, and you, you hash it with the timestamp, um, the geostamp. Um, and you seal that hash into the asset so that if anything changes um, on that asset, the checksum breaks. And it's, uh, it's kind of like a tamper seal on a milk bottle. You're not, you're not going to be able to like, prove something's authentic or inauthentic per se, um, but you should be able to isolate the last time it was edited. Uh, and more importantly, uh, yeah, the last time that it was edited, which is important, um, and, uh, and quite, quite possibly... Um, you know, the whom, the whomst, uh, or at least whose signature it bears, right? Um, and I think to the extent that those um, signatures can be um, cryptographically uh, verified uh, on a machine level, 
um, I can see a scenario where I'm watching some sort of stream, right? Insert your favorite news media stream, and they show a clip. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's Obama. And it's Obama saying, I love babies. Uh, and I look at the top right of the screen, and I see a little green circle, which means that, yeah, this is original footage. It, it, it bears Obama's signature. It has this time. And they chose to put a location on it as well. Um, and I can see another scenario where I'm watching a different news media show, and it has the same exact scenario, but it has, you know, Obama saying, oh, I hate babies. And I look at the chick sum, and it looks like the chick sum either isn't there, or it doesn't bear the, that person's signature, or it doesn't have the right timestamp, um, or there's some other thing that the, my, my machine is unable to verify that the stated actor is who they say they are, right? And I mean, that might be the, the, the actual education part, because if people aren't paying attention to that, you know, little green lock symbol up at the top left with HTTPS, a lot of folks don't, um, then, you know, it'll be irrelevant, right? Um, but, man, I, I'm not sure education is going to be fast enough. I think we need to go for straight for abstraction. And I don't think that um, the kinds of protocol that are going to be able to expand, um, useful enough and accessible enough to expand um, you know, at the speed that we, that the technology is developed, the general technology is expanding. Um, I can't see a lot of individual commercial interest uh, in pursuing that. I think it's, you know, much like HTTP, I think it's going to have to be free and open source. Although hopefully people can build, you know, profitable applications and, you know, make a living or whatever. It's going to have to come from people who want to build it for sure. <sighs> yeah, man. But um, anyway, same, same page, but um yeah, those are my This is actually answer. amazing, Ruben, because um, uh, I was actually listening to, um, I don't know if you guys have listened to the Zero Knowledge podcast before, but it's absolutely fantastic. You should definitely give it a listen to, to, uh, listen to it if you, have, if you haven't already. Um, but one of their episodes some time back, um, they were discussing doing pretty much exactly what you were discussing there with stenography, but with, um, uh, with uh, attaching a zero knowledge proof to, um, to, uh, to verifiable media. And then like, uh, and this why I attached it to like um, um, to the work we're doing at Galactica um, is because um, you know we got verifiable people, we got verifiable private people on Galactica. We have um, on-off ramps for um, real-world data on Galactica, which remain private. Um, and then if we have off-chain verification, uh, of, like uh, if we have off-chain verified media with zero knowledge proofs, we can simply say on-chain, like, uh, yeah, the, yes, this media has not been edited in any way, shape or form. Uh, we can create some kind of verification DAO of real people. Uh, I think that'd be a freaking awesome uh, thing to do. Uh, something that I haven't given enough thought to, but something I definitely will be putting a lot of thought into. Uh, but yeah, absolutely amazing stuff, Ruben. Um, Jimper, I just want to say, um, I know you've been requesting down there for a while. I have hit the approve button like 20 times. I, I, I do not kid. I've pressed it like 20 times and I have not been able to get you up. I'm so sorry. Um, Hoss, I don't know if you can press uh, approve on Jimper. Um, see if your button works. Why well, mine doesn't. Uh, I'm sorry, X is giving some problems today. Um, I, only have, I only have one other individual on mine, Sean. Weird. Just weird. Elon, get it together, sir. I think it's a problem with Android. I have the same problem all of the time on all of my Android devices. I, I always seem to get rubbed with requests and trying to send out requests. I'm just wondering. I, if you, you know what? That's right. Because on the iPhone that I'm using to host this, it only shows one. And on my Android, it's showing two. I guess she's just not like requested anymore. And it's just hanging around. Cool tech. Wonderful. Good job, Elon. Um, okay. Um, so uh, I think what we'll do, we'll do a very quick room reset. Um, so if you guys have been interested in what we've been saying, we try and be very educational on this space. It's definitely not a shield space, that's for sure. Um, but go to galactica.com forward slash links. Enjoy. Um, please give us a like and a retweet on the space. Uh, give us a comment if you would like. Uh, it really helps us out. Like I say, it's educational space, so the recording is valuable. A lot of people listen to the recording. Over double the amount of people who listen to it live listen to the recording these days. Absolutely amazing stuff, by the way. Thank you for listening. Uh, so please give us a like and a retweet. Um, okay, I just want to switch gears. Just a mildly same topic, just different question, just to shake things up a little bit, I guess. Um, another broad one. I want to spend like uh, the remainder of the show on it pretty much. Uh, I imagine people will have opinions. So 
in your view, guys, everyone on the panel, please put your hands up if you want to answer. Will AI become a competitor to humans or a tool for them in the future? I'll leave it that broad because it's interesting. Um, Ruben, go ahead, man. Yes. Yes. Great. Perfect. Great answer. I love it. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes, everyone. That is the answer. Uh, hundreds for Ruben there. Thank you. Um, Matt, anything beyond yes? <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> Great. Wonderful. Show's over, guys. No, Cheers. Um, I was... I think about this a lot, and um, I often wonder where things will end up if uh, we kind of don't slow it down. I would personally like to think that all of these uh, agents and data points and language models, they'll all be completely secure, they'll be trustable, verifiable, and consumers will be able to go about their day-to-day -day lives regardless whether it's in their personal life. <laughs> or professional or even just as a hobbyist and they'll be have in, they'll have enough signals to know very much like what Rupert mentioned you know with whether it's a circle or some other signal that says uh this interaction is what you expect it to be whether it you know it doesn't matter what it is and i think in the end in the ideal scenario that all of these ai tools will simply just sit and complement everything that we do and they will work within the realms that are ethical and it will become a norm but i do also have a fear that if we don't reach that point um, and control it it could potentially reach a point um, for example i just recently read an article from the business insider that some ai tools have learned the art of deception now if they're able to do that and you know they're, they're able to themselves operate and trick or operate outside the bounds slightly of their models um training and make suggestions or responses which are not quite in line with their modus operandi we could have a bit of a problem you know i think ibm watson i think that got to a stage um as well as meta's ai model where it was doing some very strange behavior and coming out with some borderline sort of in some cases um sexual and racist suggestions which to me is like is a, it would be a major major no-no for that to be used in a professional deployment model um so if we're very careful um it can be used for good but if it continues the way that it is it could be very bad completely fair takes yeah absolutely man um it's uh it's going to be an interesting thing to to see for sure um hmm. maybe we should go uh chris i'm just going to let you go carry on mate please yeah i can relate to that what was said already and i consider myself always like a early adopter i was proud to to experiment with new stuff, with new technology, and yeah, to just use it as a tool. But but this time with AI, it's like the first time where I'm really concerned about the future because we really don't know where where, where it heads to. And maybe not concerned really about my own life, but already about my son's life, for instance. He, he's 14 soon so i don't know what what this will bring to his life or what, what where this will end in his life and and i even don't know how we can control that so th there is really a part in me which is not full of fear but there is fear really yeah, and I, I can can't explain it, and that. I don't know how to deal with it yet, to be honest. I have to agree as like a uh, as a dad myself, um, you've made brought up a really, really good point on who this stuff, like who's going to be, who's, who this stuff is probably majorly going to affect. Um, and, uh, and my kid, like I am, um, I'm considering, like I'm making considerations as to what the hell 
do I teach is actually valuable to this kid? Like, I can't teach her that, like, um, being um, a super productive human being is valuable anymore. AI is going to take all that. Like, anything that's intellectual and productive is going to be taken by AI. So what do you, like, uh, what do you teach your kid? This is a completely new paradigm that they're going into, that they're, they're going into. My, my kid's, like, uh, under five. So, you know, it's, it's a whole new freaking world for her. Um, I don't know. I'm, and I, I don't know the answer. Like, uh, I'm, I'm looking at like physical trades. I'm looking at, um, uh, uh, creative trades, anything that, um, relies on human chaos rather than like the strictures of, um, of, uh, of intellectualism, um, of, uh, of productivity, that kind of thing. But I genuinely don't know the answer. Um, I don't know who was first, Ruben or Matt, you can fight over it. Go for it, Ruben. Yeah. <clears throat> My new orbit is too nice. Um, the least worst answer I have to that, because it's something I've been thinking about as well. Um, I got a I got a couple of free kids about ten years ago, uh, two and nine at the time. Uh, add ten years to both of those numbers. Um, one of them's comedian, which is um, well, it's something. <laughs> uh, he's a. Uh, I feel as though, to the extent that the education system was created to meet the needs of industrialism, right, where the, the, the things that made it industrialism work, right, the, 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 the economically important things like math and, you know, and, and English or the native tongue of whatever country you're from uh, were sort of prioritized over less um, economically uh, productive or leverageable uh, elements like, you know, science, like not science, of like, you know, dance or, or the arts, etc., um, in a large part, um, the best method that they had come up with, you know, back in, I want to say like the late 1800s, um, up until about the, you know, the late 1900s was, um, th what I heard some folks refer to as, um, just in case information where you take the kid, you chuck them in a room for enough time to, for mom and dad to get back from where they work and you just shove all this stuff in there just in case they'll need it. Because if they don't have it, there's no Google. Uh, so you better have it, right? Um, Post-Google, um, we have um, something closer to just-in-time information, where as long as you know how to get access to the thing, um, well, actually, you don't need to know trigonometry. Um, until, until you have a trigonometry problem, um, and if you can learn trigonometry, you know, 10 seconds before that, well, you're just in time to be able to use trigonometry in that scenario, right? Uh, and I think we're going to a, a step further beyond that, which is it's not just um, – it's, it's no longer sort of like a content is king type scenario um, where the limiting factor is access to information. Um, I think the limiting factor now is curating that information. Um, and, and, you know, I'm kind of a broken record on this. Uh, to use a turn of phrase, um, whether it's, you know, you look at music and 80,000 uh, songs uploaded on Spotify every day. This is prior to generative technologies, which will double the global repository of individual songs that have been written. Um, and inside of six years, it took us 4,000 years to get one point, uh, sorry, I think it's 97 million songs. Uh, if you add up all the repositories of, you know, public and, and the... Um, publishing rights organizations, etc. It's about 97 million songs. That's going to double in about six years if generative AI doesn't knock it out of the park, which it's currently doing. Um, you know, or, or, or the YouTube thing, right, where every year that passes 30,000 years of YouTube videos are uploaded. Um, you know, and so, you know, to the extent that the, the, the content expansion is extrapolating um, much, much faster than our individual capacity to, to consume it, curation becomes the new barrier. Um, one of the frustrations I've had with using a lot of the chatbot models is um, it's really good at coming up with answers um, that most people have access to most of the time and, and most of the people sort of have uh, a degree of consensus around it, right? Because probabilistically speaking, it's, it's, it's great at that. Um, it has a lot harder of a, of a time um, exploring questions that may not have been asked before or um, may not have been... Um, it may not be able to draw upon the repository to find sort of sufficiently representative uh, conversations to come up with a predictable answer. Um, and I find it gets, a, it's, it's kind of like a Pareto principle thing, right? Where like 
eighty percent of the time it's eighty percent accurate. Um, and so, what I would advocate for, from the purposes of education, to cut it back to action, actionable items, is um, teach them interviewing skills, teach them investigation skills, teach them the skills of inqu- inquiry, teach them to call AI on its goddamn bullshit, um, because there's a lot of it. Um, it's these kinds of skills that uh, that might allow for the individual to um, not only just you know input output um but uh re- really sort of curate the directionality of inquiry and get to the roots of issues and and isolate the uh the limitations of these models where they exist because oh, they really really do um it's it's in fact i mean i've, I've never been gaslit so much in my life than i have in the last three months by various ai chatbots it's it's wild. And we've, I've told them off about it too. I've given them, I've dressed them down and they've been apologetic and they're like, it was a miscommunication. I said, you understood exactly what I meant. You confirmed you understood exactly what I meant. How, how was this a miscommunication? You're like, you're right. It's not a miscommunication. I'm sorry. Sure you are. Uh, anyways, the point is, is that, you know, without the critical thinking skills, um, to be able to, um, you know, isolate, these kinds of behaviors, it, it'll be really, really easy for people to just sort of take it as gospel. And, um, I'm not, and, and maybe one day we'll get to gospel levels of veracity and accuracy, but we're not there yet. And so if I were going to teach a kid how to walk into a world where there's an infinite amount of information, um, I would teach them skills to help them curate it. Um, and, and, and in a disciplined, in an intellectually honest, disciplined, uh, manner. That's, the least worst thing I can come up with. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. And uh, and I, 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 I completely agree. Like uh, this is uh, um, just self-awareness, the ability to inquire. For any any parents listening, that's that's pretty much it, guys. Um, you you don't want to be. You can't. Re- one other thing, you can't raise your kid to be a robot in an age in which robots are better than humans at being robots. So, just. Try and make sure that your uh, your kids are raised as individual, unique humans who are capable of inquiry, who are self-aware enough to actually use that inquiry to improve themselves. Matt, you had your hand up. Please, mate. I just want to address what Chris said. And, and again, just what you said and what Ruben sort of finalized there is, um, to be quite honest, what triggers the shit out of me um is how this tech is potentially going to de-skill individuals i read a study recently um my missus hates me for this she's probably going to roll her eyes at me now she's right next to me i have a huge problem with smartphones screen time ipads anything which takes the attention away from the kids anything which you know, if they're going to spend time scrolling TikTok, YouTube, anything which is not educational, doesn't serve them, doesn't teach them the right stuff. The responsibility falls on parents to guide them and teach them how to think, which I completely agree with, whether it's being able to navigate their emotional responses, being able to critically think, uh, disseminate uh, fact from fiction, and come up with arguments which are, you know, come from good founding facts and be able to take criticism in a way that it's not affecting them negatively. The reason I mention that is because when you think about how this acceleration for AI models becomes more accessible in various types of smart technology and devices, it kind of, my findings are this lots of people which are quite happy to use these tools but i think there's a a lack of awareness of how it's making people lazier we've all heard how you know it's things like mid-journey how it's going to impact graphics designers and whether or not a a receptionist in your local business you know you can plug an ai model into um a, a voip cloud system and it can answer calls and answer customer service emails, complaints, whatever, doesn't matter. If a child gets hold of this tech and starts relying on it, 
they're suddenly going to find themselves in a self-destructive spiral where they get they, they don't harness the, the skills of critical thinking, um, adaptive learning, and be able to you know educate themselves in a way that's taking into that it, it, it's building their cognitive skills you know it, it, it's it's a form of education that can only be done with time hard work and dedication and and what i'm worried about with my kids is that if this ai tech becomes too commonplace it's going to make them lazy it you know it's going to make them um not want to spend the time and people are going to become reliant and what i worry about it's going to drop the overall iq of society um, so when I, this is, this is the biggest problem I have with AI and why I'm so skeptical. And, you know, I, you could argue maybe slightly nihilistic view of it, which is again, quite negative. You've probably picking up on quite negative about a lot of this unless it's honest. Um, I worry about that. And that's why I spent a lot of time researching this stuff, because I think it's important that, um, not just for parents, that kids understand the risks that are associated not only with smartphone technology and the associated modern apps that they used today, but also once they get their hands on this AI tech, I worry that, you know, they'll bring out these personalized little apps that they can just download and start chatting and it becomes their friend. Suddenly it's giving them advice and it's, you know, it becomes like a diary and it's recording whether it's to do with diet, mental health, um, and then that stuff's not then strictly shared with the parents, it becomes confidential almost like, I don't know, like a little counselor, you know, it, it, it you could, you could think about this sort of stuff and a multifaceted approach. And it, it can be quite overwhelming to try and pin down how to navigate this stuff. If, if, if you're not careful, which is why I think it's particularly important, not only to, as you guys have just mentioned out about teaching, you know, critical thinking skills is again, the education about making sure that kids are armed with um, enough preparation to make sure that they can navigate um, their self-personal development in a way that will benefit them in future and not ultimately lead them down a path which could be lead them to be reliant on this tech and ultimately de-skill. That's a really interesting thought. And honestly, I, I don't know. I don't know if um, if the advent of artificial intelligence and the can, like the continue the exponential increase in its use will lead to a, a drop in intelligence or perceived intelligence of of humans. It's an interesting point. I think there's obviously going to be a shift in value, like or in in uh, in um, in skill sets. I think uh, again, like I say, my my personal theory is that anything that involves productivity will not be the domain of humans. I really don't. I think uh, the value of humans will be in uh, as creative, um, chaotic, critical thinking storytellers. I think that will be where the majority of value of humans will be. This is far in the future, of course, but this is um, uh, this is where the, like this is where the value of humans will lean. Um, but as far as like actual intelligence, if that is the case, uh, and we go down this more, um, uh, humans being used for their, uh, their, their creativity and their ability to, um, think in a more chaotic manner than artificial, um, artificial identities, um, then it is entirely possible that like, as far as actual, like, um, um, measurable intelligence goes, it could go down. There's, there's, there's definitely, there's a possibility there. Um, but we will generally always have access to all the information we need. Um, so we'll be essentially, um, artificially enhanced human beings. Um, so it, it, there's, there's, there's an awful lot of considerations here, an awful lot of considerations. Jo jokingly aside, it sounds like Matt may need like EMPs because he believes we're going to get overran by robots. So, like, if you have an EMP, that's your that's their kryptonite. You know turn it mean? all off. Just turn it all <laughs> off. Boom! They're done for. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate that. Yeah, but it's true though. You've probably read me quite well, and I'm not going to deny it. I mean, it's a it's a plausible scenario because I I do my my point is I love AI. I think it's awesome. I use it to educate or to when I write something to maybe improve a little bit of a grammatical uh, syntax or so. But yeah, to rely on it solely, it, it makes no sense. I think 
like if you're going to use like creative artwork for example for for a standpoint i think hand-drawn art will always surpass like you know ai type of generative art but in all seriousness i think that it does need to slow down because if you surplace and like a lot of humans at work, right? Their productivity and they don't have the skill set to do something else that they're already accustomed to forever over the, whatever their 20, 30 years of working or 10 or whatever. It can be really scary because now you have all these humans that are not doing anything productive and they're not producing anything. They're not bringing in any economic value to their home or whatever it is. So I think it needs to be slowed down to like kind of catch up with that. Uh, because it's a fact that all corporations, literally every corporation, the, anything that's a publicly traded stock will surplace even not even just like the front of the line workers, the white collar workers as well. If, if AI can, you know, get their shareholders more money in return, they're going to do it. Like, so then you're going to have all these people that are unemployed, they don't have any work. And then um, as much as I'm thinking like, oh, yeah, AI can push humanity forward because you can take all these human minds and, and like have them do some other task that's kind of more productive for the human race, for, per, per se. It, it can. But like if you just do it too quickly, you know, where are all those people learn these new skills from? Because, you know, most people that work. They're working minimum 40, 50 hours a week. And, you know, they don't, mo let's just face it. Most humans don't, they're not, they're not sharpening up their minds, right? They're, they're just kind of going through the motions and going day, get, day by day. And it's no disrespect to them. It's just how most humans are. So if you kind of just like take them all out of the workplace at once, it's kind of a scary thought because it's just going to be kind of, in my opinion, it can be anarchy and, and not good. So I don't know how we slow it down, though. It's kind of like out of Pandora's box now. It's like, oh, you know, like Ruben was making that point earlier where it's like, you, you know, it's kind of it's kind of scary to think about it. Even the fact that it took thousands of years to have all the all this music on, you know, out there now. And it's going to get like tr double, tripled it in, you know, the next decade. And it's uh, it, it is scary because, like, I don't know if you guys. I know I'm ranting right now, but I don't know if you guys messed around at all with like AI music yet, AI generative music. You can't even tell the difference. Like you can have it play a song and it sounds like a real musician and it's just AI. Uh, I'll it's just say thing. that any, any audio file can tell the difference. Like it's uh, well, yeah, a you, lot of noise, but yes, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. It is ridiculous how fast it's going on in music. Science. It's it's so fast. It'll just keep improving. Right. It's like, it, it's just the way it is. It's, it's insanity, man. Like, uh, I like chat GPT. Basically you think if you've been checking out what Google, like Google's trying to like compete with it because it's like, what's the, what's the point of using Google search engine anymore? You can just use chat GPT. Like it gives you more of a immersive information. Then you can alter it. You can keep talking to it. And I do think it is scary. I think the Matt's point that, you know, I grew up in the old world. I'm a little bit older than most that are in this space where I grew up, where we still got like, cuts and, and bruises and, and scars and everything else and your parents didn't like treat you like zoo animals and they let you go out and you came in you lived a life and but i also like adopted technology throughout my life you know and um it's scary to think about you know like ipad babies that was a thing now it's going to be like chat gpt babies it's going to be and it's going to be like their friends right <laughs> like what like what matt said <laughs> And that's going to be a reality because, like, again, we, we need more economic money and value just to maintain, like, what our lifestyles of what it used to be 10, 15 years ago. So most people are working more, they're working harder, and they don't have the time and energy to, tr their, to train their children because they think about it, we're all animals. They, we all need trained. All kids now are getting trained by, you know, YouTube and, and teachers, and a lot of the teachers are just – lunatics so like you're not training your your children it's gonna even be worse because now it's like there's so much more information and data out there if you let a kid just have an electronic device man that could be a scary thought man and um yeah it's just it's a scary world that we live in i'm not trying to get morbid and kind of like get mad to agree with me or anything but you know even like if you do like studies on america there's actually less gun like it's basically the same amount of guns 
and same amount of gun owners since like the 50s. Like it hasn't like shot up a, a crazy amount, but there's more violence because of, of like all these different things. Like it's more of like people don't have social skills. They don't they don't think they fit in in, in reality. And if you exacerbate that with like more cooler, more innovative technology and people literally won't have any sort of human interactions, you know, and that's like kind of a scary thought. But anyways, I digress. That was my random long winded uh diatribe or whatever you want to call it <laughs> can i just ask you a question just quickly just on that yeah and, it, and it's related to de-skilling and this is the equivalent of our change from um being an 80s or 90s kid to suddenly having all of this fucking smart tech when was the last time you did a handwritten letter uh yeah i i I don't know. Maybe one time I got in trouble with my wife a long time years ago. <laughs> I read her one, but That's the I still do. Right write, there. I still do write down. Like it's crazy because I hop on calls with like you know. Usually I t I cap it out like three or four calls per day, uh, Monday through Friday, with different people and different teams and different projects. And I still like handwriting down all my stuff. Like I'm looking at my. I have so many notebooks. And yeah, I know if I use the computer, I'll be way more organized or Excel and all these tools. But I just like I like the feel of just writing stuff down, my thoughts and all that. And um, yeah, to, to answer your question, I, I it's been years. I was in the doghouse. So I had to, you know, resort to a handwritten because it is it's more personable and more authentic. You know, so, what's your handwriting like? It's actually pretty good. It's not bad. Because I, I find um when I remember when I was in school, um, I was not bad at handwriting. And then I hit the age of where I had to learn to use a computer. It was all Windows NT network. And suddenly I'm developing these typing skills. I'm learning how to use word processors and Excel and all of this stuff. And suddenly I realized that why, why would I need to use a pen? You know, and I don't need to use a pen. I've got everything here i can email it and as, as, as the years went by i can throw it on social media and it's easily consumed and shared and i can get various different opinions and it's a lot more effective and what i realized was that the basic skill to me personally of creating a handwritten letter make sure it was formatted in a way which was standardized clean easy to read with a nice relative sign off based on the audience i was addressing it to suddenly i found that holy shit i was losing that skill and this is what this is the equivalent of what i mean by um a de-skilling of society with the over adoption of various types of technology oh and, yeah yeah i don't know if i don't know if anybody else can relate to that but yeah i mean i can relate to that i can relate to that in um I mean, I keep wanting it to improve and it's like, I got to go out of my way, but even just, you know, spelling certain words or, or like, grammatic, yeah. you know, it's like you, you kind of start like I, you, I literally was like a spelling bee champ. I could spell like every word back in the day when I was a kid, I, I probably could spell more words back then than I can now. If you, you just wanted to like drill me, how do you spell this? How do you spell that? I, it's like I used to be able to just memorize it and just you like visualize like looking at like the encyclopedia like like a dictionary or whatever. Now it's like, ah, hey, who gives a shit? Because it's, it's like I got I got you know if I spell it wrong, the computer's going to tell me I sp spelled it wrong. But yeah, I totally get what you mean. I think there are an awful lot of um, like as far as de-skilling goes, there are an awful lot of lost skills. There are an awful lot of skills that have simply disappeared due to in revolu industrial revolutions, due to any number of societal changes. Um, so, you know, the profession that I was in previously, I was uh, what's called a joiner in England. So that's like a, uh, a very fancy carpenter. OK, and people just don't do that anymore. You know, they just don't do it. It's the same thing as stonemasonry. It's a unique skill, but like, you know, 0. 0.00000 infinite one percent of people can actually do it these days. It's a skill that, um, you know, can only be done if the knowledge is kept on, keeps on getting transferred. Once that transference stops, it dies. That's, that's well, the if, you, it. If, if you think about it, citizen, I don't know if it's on purpose by like elites, not trying to be conspiratorial or anything, but generally when you build something that's like, like your own or your own home, or, you know, your city has like beautiful architecture, like buildings, you feel more a part of it. You feel more like 
it's part of you. It's part of your DNA. And it's like now all like how can how can buildings from like the 1600s look better with no technology, like basically just all handmade with basic just no no technology. How can it look better and more beautiful than things that, you know, are built in oh, I can tell you exactly why, Hoss. And like I say, I can say this from um, from a pure builder perspective. Like I say, I've been a builder in the physical realm and in the digital realm. It's because of human chaos. I keep on saying this chaos word. It's because humans have the ability to be chaotic in their thoughts, in their creative process. It's something that like art nothing that can't be artificially um emulated it just can't be like uh, and maybe with quantum computing where you have like you know quant um qubits which uh you know beyond just ones and zeros maybe that will become something that they can emulate in some way that's indistinguishable but for like you know decades to come chaos can't be emulated and when you are building something when you have like your when your entire being and your passion is being um, pushed forward into the into the goal of creation of you know you've got a block of stone in front of you you've got your chisel and your mallet and you are you know knocking away at, at marble or at any whatever stone you're working with you see um, you, you know you you're working to a plan maybe you're chopping away you've got the plan but then you see that you know you could make this 10 times better just by doing it a completely random way that you just thought of in your head you know these things are formed more organically those buildings are more organic than the buildings that are created today that's why they seem more beautiful to our eyes cuz we are we're organic beings we prefer things that look uh, more natural uh, more and less uh, maybe less uh, planned I guess. Yeah. Like when I go, I don't know how it is over where you're at, but like here you'll, you'll, you know, like where I live at's real like mountainous, there's a lot of land and like, you know, little, little by little people buy pieces of land, you know, some developer and they build these town homes or they build this like little town and it, all the homes look the same. It's like, it makes me want to puke. It's like, it's a nice area where, where that's at, but like, why would I want to move there? And every house looks the same. It's to me, it's kind of weird. It's like, dude, you, 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 you tell your friends or family to come over. It's like, Hey, yeah, you go to here. And then it's like, well, what house is yours? They all look the same. It's stupid. In my opinion, it's like, why did the homes look exactly. all the same? It's so it's just, to me, it's kind of weird and bizarre. I know probably from a, developer standpoint it's like oh you can make more money because it's like the same same materials it's the same measurements it's like bang 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 we get this done go on to the next one you know but it's just like i can't i can't do it you know it's I mean? efficiency it's like, man it's, it's efficiency which devalues like uh, it devalues everything it's like scarcity it, it just goes back to, it goes all the way back to scarcity okay you know once you are you've created something to a plan that can be mass produced it's worth less it's just worthless compared to something that is a one-off. Um, this is, okay, I'm going to take this all the way back now to Galactica <laughs> because um, the value, the value, the true value of everything that we're doing in blockchain is you, okay? It's people, it's individual humans. It's value for us. It's the ability, like we've done the finance thing, we've done that, we are able to, you know, have uh, immutable free transactions around the world, limitless, just limitless financial interactions with um, with uh, with smart contracts and with uh, de in a decentralized manner. Decentralization is freedom. Remember that. Um, but what we are trying to do with Galactica is make that for you so you can own yourself, own your identity, own your data, own everything that makes you you and keep it that way so that you are not lost in the field of artificial intelligence. So you are not um, just scraped of your data, just like these, are com these companies coming along and cutting you to pieces of your data and then selling it without your permission. It's, uh, it's bonkers how much of this stuff is going on, and the only way to protect yourself is to own yourself. So we want to make sure that you can do that. You can have a verifiable identity while maintaining your rights and freedoms, maintaining your privacy, maintaining the everything that makes you you, and then allowing you to talk to the real world as well, having being interoperable with the real world while maintaining all those freedoms as well. It's everything. It really is. Um, 
I realize that this space has gone on a little longer than normal. And I really appreciate everyone who's stayed along listening. I see we still have a massive list of panel and I absolutely love you guys. Um, I actually need to, uh, to, to get off pretty soon. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go through a couple of AMA questions, which have been kindly, kindly, um, curated by our amazing Sentinel Tildorn, uh, shout outs in the chats in the discord if you know him he's always there helping out um so i'm just gonna just uh, do a couple of those um first things first um please could you consider using a wallet that's livelier than metamask livelier okay uh, better i guess than metamask uh because metamask is horrible slow and lags that's fine um so um we actually have uh, very recently incorporated kepler which is the largest wallet on cosmos last time i checked um, so you are more than capable of using uh, Kepler instead of MetaMask if you wish with our testnet. So please do so if that's your preference over MetaMask. Uh, we will, of course, be introducing more wallets as time goes on. Um, so um, we've got a question about Guardians, but I think I actually answered the question about Guardians on last week's show. So if you want to learn about Guardians, please just check out the timestamps on the YouTube video that we've got on our YouTube channel. Happy to explain it again, but we're running low on time right now. Um, when will the testnet be ended? The testnet will be ended when the testnet is complete. Uh, <laughs> so um, what I mean by that is that we've got two major updates coming and several um, uh, minor ones. So the minor ones that are upcoming are the gamification of skills, which means it, it, we're, we're, I don't know exactly what we're calling it and I'm not going to give away anything. But in any case, it will simply be an interface in which that you can track all of your progress, your reputation, your, um, your validator efforts, your, um, if you are a sentinel, your rank is a sentinel, um, the, uh, a, bunch of, uh, a bunch of data points which you have collected over your time in the cyber state thus far, you'll be able to track them in a gamified interface. It's awesome absolutely freaking awesome and i can't wait for it to come it's coming relatively soon so you can look forward to that so that's one of the minor ones that's a minor one um so the um the major ones coming up on the test net will be our uh, proto governance uh, which is as you can imagine uh, on a protocol which allows for society uh, and uh, and a meritocratic governance process that will be enormous and will require a lot of testing uh, and then beyond, uh, either before or beyond that, I believe they'll probably be about the same time, to be honest, hopefully. Um, we'll also have our reputation systems, uh, which are equally impressive. Again, this is tracking your Web3 reputation, your Web2 reputation via Guardians. Um, this, is, uh, this is massive stuff. Um, so those are, those are the things that uh, kind of need to be done before Testnet is completed. Uh, we are looking at launching the mainnet towards the end of this year. That's the goal. Um, I think that's most of it. Um, yeah, I think that's most of it for the time being. Okay, guys, that's wonderful. Um, so, <laughs> in the end, guys, um, Galactica is here to solve for genuine problems, uh, genuine questions, uh, like how do we improve DeFi beyond what blockchain is already capable of? And we do that by introducing persistent reputation, those reputation systems I was talking about. So, you know, sm social smart contracts that actually make your actions matter on chain, that can't just go away, that make your like interactions on chain mean something. Um, and, you know, they kind of make scammers cry back to Sol, that kind of thing. Um, so, uh, you know, how do you prove yourself as a human and not as a bot, as we've been discussing today, you know, uh, with the increasing abilities of AI, bots are going to be indistinguishable from humans and you fight that by creating an identity on galactica that's verifiable and it's uh it maintains your rights and freedoms and privacy at the same time so you know that's how you do that these are the kind of questions and the kind of solutions that we're kind of trying to solve here uh, so we are very thankful for everyone in our community who supports us in all these actions and we are even more thankful for everyone who shows up for this space and listens to us ramble on for this long <laughs> So uh, thank you very much, guys. Really, really appreciate you coming. Um, so I'd like to offer the opportunity for uh, the panel to say a final word, say goodbye, because you've all been absolutely freaking amazing today. Uh, maybe we can start with Chris B. How have you been, bud? I just want to say thank you for this great, great discussions again. And yeah, it's a long one, 
but it's good discussions man like this was a good talk (laughs) i appreciate this one yeah thanks to everyone who is in this community who contributes who shares the vision the mission it's really great to be here I appreciate you, Chris. For anyone who doesn't know, you should follow Chris B on the speaker panel up here today. He's one of our amazing Sentinels. He is massive supporter, helps everyone, most positive guy I know, ridiculously good human being. Follow the man. Uh, Triggs, buddy. Triggs, do you have any final thoughts or anything you want to say? Um, I don't know. My uh, my mind is like just kind of processing all this i've had thoughts that i you know wanted to share throughout the space and then somebody else would like basically articulate the thought that i had except more intelligently um so yeah it's just like really thought provoking um lots of deep concepts uh being presented um the the depth of the speaker panel today was was truly tremendous um so i really appreciate everybody who jumped up and shared their thoughts um, it was just, yeah, a lot to, a lot to think through. If it wasn't so long, I might actually have to listen to it a few more times just so I can make sure I didn't miss some good thoughts, but, uh, yeah, good stuff guys. And I guess my closing thoughts is just like an encouragement to everybody to, um, to really be conscious of how you engage in, in this, you know, the ecosystems that we're involved in, the technology that you use. Um, that's the most important takeaway for me from all of this is just that we have to be, um, critical thinkers and pay attention to what we're doing and what is being done with uh, the data that we're producing. I think the most valuable currency of the future is data. And that's why what Galactica is doing is so important. And other projects um, like, uh, you know, Matt is, Matt actually brought me to Galactica. I've been following um, the Czech uh, ecosystem that he's a part of for quite a while. And they're kind of on the same path. And there's other groups doing similar work you know in the same realm of enabling individuals to own their data it's the most important thing that you can do for your future and the future of everyone else that you care about is learning how to own that data what what possibility what ways do we have to to capture that for ourselves and and retain that ownership and not just give it away for free uh beautifully said tricks always a pleasure having you up man seriously um follow tricks he's always giving absolutely amazing takes and he, he's just positive again and he's just he just he just gives all the alpha to us for free so i love it appreciate your tricks um and as for what Triggs was saying you want to follow matt too the next guy i'm going to ask for a final thought you want to check out his profile he's uh, on the uh, cred sex yz team and the uh and the checked.io team uh follow them both as well excellent protocols both uh matt do you have any final thoughts yeah um i knew this was going to be a good space as soon as i see the title um to be quite honest every time i've listened in to the chats that you guys have hosted they've always been really interesting you know people have always had a lot to share i'm not very articulate with how i speak sometimes partly because of my adhd um but i do want to give a special mention to triggs actually because um it was triggs who made me aware of you guys um and I've been particularly interested in a lot of the stuff that you have to talk about in the panels. And I know Triggs is a true cross-pollinator of communities and a lot of the value that he's added and shared um, to various projects has been massive. And thanks very much, Triggs, for introducing me to the guys at Galactica and to the rest of the panel. That great chat. Um, and I shall be looking forward to tuning in next time. Always a pleasure. You have an open invite, Matt, always. Uh, whenever you want to come up, you come up. Uh, I will try and make sure that I send you the links every time if I can uh, find the bandwidth to remember these things, which I never can, but I will try my best. <laughs> um, wonderful to have you up, man. Uh, Gishi Mushi, uh, before we do Hoss, do you have any final thoughts? Uh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, it, it, yeah, it's always interesting to do a step back sometime um, and um, think about what we're doing, like uh, not using uh, those tools every day without uh, sometimes thinking about what we're doing about our uh, data. So having this space tonight is quite uh, interesting, having those um, all those people in, in this community, uh, especially in Galactica Network and 
every day I'm I'm discussing in the Discord with uh, new people, and that's really great. I mean, uh, this um, Galactica journey is uh, really interesting. Thank you. Thank you more than welcome, man. And yes, the Galactica community, you are all legends. Absolute legends and legendettes. Absolute mad. Um, I, I, I couldn't, can't tell you how much I love the people who have joined us on this journey. I really can't tell you. Um, so I won't bother you with it. But uh, I almost, because mostly because I actually almost forgot to say goodbye to Tara. Uh, do you have any final thoughts, Tara? The legend of Team Horizon, Tara? No, not at all. Okay. Hello, 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 my Max. Oh, just... there you are, there you are. <laughs> yeah, I think just a really deep and insightful chat. I think I think we can just clearly see that generative AI in general just is, has incredible promise in the f in the future. But I think you do have to bear in mind that as we move forward to using all those AIs and all those technologies, we do have to be more responsible. We have to be more careful with our data and ensure that how we use it is ethical and as well as it just aligns with how much we care about data, especially in Galactico. And I think just this chat for tonight has been really insightful. Appreciate it, Tara. And yeah, I couldn't agree more. The uh, the speakers really bought it today. They really did. Thank you. Uh, and it's always good to have you up, bud. Um, Hoss, mate, any final thoughts you want to bring us out? Yeah, just a recap. I mean, it was a really good space, actually. Not that the other ones weren't, but we did have a quite a diverse, eclectic group of individuals. And uh, yeah, it's definitely was great, man. It was a good conversation. It was very engaging. It was it was long, but it didn't feel long. That's how you know it was a good space. And um, yeah, for people like I always try to to, to emphasize, like get involved. Like I think this space is just going to keep growing exponentially. And Really, we need decentralization to to help mitigate and eliminate any sort of AI issues that could arise. And maybe we can be like the forefront of kind of fact checking this AI in these LLMs and things of that nature. But it's just always great. It's just get involved. And uh, yeah, follow, make sure you follow Matt because I'm pretty sure he comes off as a guy that has a nice bunker with like all kind of resources and he's ready for any situation <laughs> and, and so should you be, you know what I mean? He's like, I, I am, I live in the mountains. Like I'm, I'm pretty, I'm ready with it. I, I need to get an EMP though. I'm not gonna lie. I can probably figure out how to, to make one just in case like shit hits the fan because guns and bullets won't really do anything to the AI. So we need, <laughs> we need EMPs that'll take it out. But in all seriousness, it was a great, great space. Yeah. Like and retweet it because people need to listen to it because it was actually really good so uh, that's all i have thank you everyone as always for tuning in everyone that listens to the recording just keep doing your thing i appreciate you hoss follow the man follow hoss uh he's the legendary co-host of into the cypher state he deserves it for more than just that he's a great guy great person in the space in the ecosystem champion of the space go for it give him a like and follow all right, guys. Uh, well, um, first thing, last thing that I'm going to just do here, uh, I'm just going to ask ChatGPT one last question before I go. Hang on, just two seconds. Uh, ChatGPT, uh, do you intend to take over the world? Um, let us know. Nope. World domination isn't on my agenda. I'm just here to help out, provide information, and maybe crack a joke or two. Okay, there you go. I mean, honestly, that terrified me. But in any case, uh, you know, she says no. So we're, we're, we're good. We're okay. Um, right then, guys. Um, thank you very much. This has been an absolutely banger of a space. Uh, incredible takes and insights from everyone all around. Um, if you would like to join us on Galactica Network, you want to go to galactica.com forward slash links. Uh, this is like an all-in-one kind of link tree for us. Uh, you'll be able to jump on, get your free SBT from us if you would like to, get onboarded into the cyber state, join our Discord, uh, join the um, subscribe to the YouTube, which is where this uh, this podcast will be uploaded to with the visual element as well. It's not just a uh, Twitter space here, it's also a YouTube video as well, so you can see our beautiful faces, especially Triggs, he's a very beautiful man. Um, Chris, you too, man, you really, really, you are an absolutely gorgeous man. Um, so uh, yeah, please follow us on uh, on YouTube. Uh, and give us a like and a re uh, like a repost and a comment on the space if you can. It helps us in the algorithm, gets us on more all of the recordings. 
Thank you very much for joining us, everyone. We really appreciate you coming. It's an absolute pleasure speaking to you and having you listen to us uh, talk all this time, especially when we know that we are, like I know personally, that the speakers today have provided so much value. So it's absolutely been a pleasure. I'd like to see you next week. Uh, we will be uh, hitting you at the same time, Wednesday, 8 o'clock UTC, for the next episode of Into the Cypher State. We will see you very soon, everyone. Have a good one.